Shazam! Fury of the Gods marks the 13th movie in the DCEU, so in this video I'm going to be ranking all 13 movies from the worst to the best. Before we get into my ranking, let me know your ranking in the comments down below. I'll also be releasing a DCEU Heroes tier list later this weekend, so subscribe so you don't miss that video. But starting off the list in 13th place is Suicide Squad. I really have nothing good to say about this movie. It just sucks. Are we some kind of... Suicide Squad. But just slightly above this, in 12th place for me is The Justice League. Again, really nothing good about this movie. The only reason it's above the Suicide Squad movie is because I actually like the characters that are in this movie more than Suicide Squad. But moving up the list in 11th place, and there is a very big gap between 12th and 11th place, is Wonder Woman 1984. I know a lot of people don't like this movie. I really don't like it either, but I can still say it is an entertaining movie. I know it got bogged down with the release on HBO Max and a weird day and date in theater. It was just a really weird release because of the pandemic, but this movie, I'm kind of glad it flew under the radar because it was not that great. I really don't like what they did with the Wonder Woman character, and this just doesn't feel like the same Wonder Woman that's in all the other movies. I also really don't like what they did to Steve Trevor in this movie. It was just really, really weird. But in 10th place for me is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice Ultimate Edition. I recently watched the Ultimate Edition for the first time. I think it was last year that I watched for the very first time. And honestly, it's a big improvement from the first movie, but that's not saying much because the first movie is not that good at all whatsoever. But I still enjoy this one. I still think though, the portrayal of Batman is what makes me mad every single time. Like I genuinely just don't like what they did with the character in this movie and it just frustrates me and so that's why this movie is a lot lower on my list i actually don't mind how Zack snyder portrays superman in this movie and i honestly like the back and forth between superman and batman and that's not possible without the batman that Zack snyder created again i'm just not a fan of that specific in like interpretation of the character i just don't like batman with guns no guns Moving up the list in ninth place is Birds of Prey and whatever the rest of the title is. To be honest, I don't remember much in this movie. I've seen it one time, whereas I think every other movie on this list, except for Justice League and Suicide Squad, I've seen twice. But it was still a really, really, really great time. The, t the only time I watched it. I love Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn and her character really elevates this movie. I think Ewan McGregor is the person who plays the villain, does an amazing job. The little bird's a rat. And just overall, it's an entertaining movie. I don't think story-wise it does anything spectacular, but I think it's aided by also just great action set pieces and just overall production design, which is what's great in all of the DC movies, even though the stories are fairly basic. I think Birds of Prey just puts enough out there with the type of action and going full dark rated R mode. I like that. Next up in eighth place for me is Black Adam. I'm one of the few people that genuinely enjoys this movie a lot. Like I had such a fun time watching this movie. I watched it twice in theaters, once in Dolby, once in IMAX, and dude, it was just a really fun time. Like, it's big spectacle action. Again, story is beyond mediocre. Like, it is not a good story at all, but it's an entertaining time. That's really all I feel like I can ask for. Like, I guess it was the moment in which we're watching the DCEU unfold. We already knew that James Gunn was taking over. Like, we knew the direction that a reset was imminent. Black Adam. All I was kind of expecting from Black Adam was dumb, fun, the rock action. And that's pretty much what I got. And I and I really enjoyed that element of it. But again, pretty much every other element of this movie is not that great. And I think if I rewatch Birds of Prey, it's going to overtake Black Adam super easily. But maybe it's just the recency bias and the fact that I haven't gone back to Black Adam after watching it twice in theaters, which is pretty much two days in a row. And so I definitely have some bias there, but I'm excited to rewatch Black Adam in the near future after all of the resetting is done, see where it lands for me. Because again, it's just a really entertaining time for me. In seventh place for me, and this is probably one of my two biggest hot takes in this video, is Zack Snyder's Justice League. I rewatched this one right before Black Adam and I like it a lot more, but that doesn't mean it's still that great of a movie because it's four hours long. Like rewatchability for me personally is really, really big. I understand if a lot of other people, it's not a big factor for you, but for me, rewatchability, that goes hand in hand with the pacing and just importance of story. And I'm not going back to this one. And you can make that argument for even a movie like Black Adam where it's like, oh, Black Adam isn't gonna be important to the future of the DCU, but pacing wise, it's a really short movie. I can turn it on whenever I want, 
two hours action packed pretty much one big action sequence and my time is like i i was entertained but zack snyder's justice league it's so much setup so much dialogue for something that i'm never gonna get like to see paid off and it just feels like a bunch of setup for something i know just isn't gonna happen i might be over cynical about this movie because we're never gonna see this vision fulfilled and i'm not i'm not anti snyder's dc or i'm not pro snyder's dc i really don't care what happens in these characters because i'm not the biggest fan of his superman i'm not the biggest fan of his batman and then his wonder woman flash cyborg they're all cool so it's not like i'm cynical towards the man himself but the movie is four hours long like when am i like i got lucky i revisited this one over my christmas break because i genuinely genuinely will probably never watch this movie again moving up the list in sixth place is the newly released shazam fury of the gods if you guys want to check out my full initial reaction slash spoiler free review you can check it out on screen or in the description down below but i really enjoyed this movie i had such a fun time with it again it's not a perfect movie by any means like at all whatsoever there are major flaws with it but I still really had a fun time. A lot of the jokes landed for me, and you guys will see later on this list, I'm a massive fan of the first Shazam movie. It just feels like with the bigger scale you get with all of this mythological lore, these creatures, these gods and goddesses, you kind of take away from the family element that in my opinion, makes the first one amazing. I've seen all of the Fast and the Furious movies, lady. It's all about family. And so I feel like that sacrifice, that balance, it wasn't as well executed as I wanted to. And that's why it falls pretty much dead in the middle of this list. It has a balance of what I love about the top three or four DC movies where it has heart, it has thematic elements that really resonate with me. But at the same time, it has some of those pacing issues, at times visual issues, but mainly just tonal issues that these other movies go through where they can't decide if they want to be comedies or just super dark mythological like tales, you know what I mean? Like there's not a good balance of what these movies are trying to achieve. And Shazam Fury of the Gods is honestly the best representation of the DCEU's tonal balance as a whole. Because if you look at movies like Birds of Prey, Aquaman, and even the first Shazam movie, as well as Shazam Fury of the Gods, you have this really lighthearted tone that yes, there are darker elements with like obviously Billy and being left behind by his family and finding new family, as well as just the darker tones of all these other movies. But also you have the super, super dark themes of Man of Steel, BVS, even Zack Snyder's Justice League and Suicide Squad, where you just feel such a dark tone that does not balance at all with some of the other movies in the DC universe. And so it's a weird balance that the universe as a whole wasn't able to crack the code on and Jazam Fury of the Gods feels like the pinnacle of all of that because the movie in itself just can't balance all of these crazy big tones. Moving on though, in fifth place for me is Man of Steel. I've come around to this movie a lot recently and recently as in like the last year and a half when I finally rewatched it. I enjoy this movie a lot more now. I think it's because I understand the thematic elements of it. And you might be wondering, why do you have BVS so low if you have this movie so much higher? Like, I just, again, the Batman thing really pisses me off. But also, Man of Steel for me, I just, I watched it as a little kid. So I don't think I really understood like the symbol of hope, the, the necessity to humanity, the whole like God thing with Superman that Zack Snyder was trying to achieve. I don't think I really understood any of that when I was younger. And so I'm glad I rewatched it, gave it another chance and I enjoy it a lot, but that's not to say it's a great movie. Honestly, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, they're pretty much all the same rating for me. It just matters which one I enjoy more. But Man of Steel is definitely like a very depressing movie. But that's kind of what I don't like about it. And that's why I might go below Shazam Fury of the Gods. I don't know if many of you guys know this, but my favorite iteration of Superman is Tyler Hecklin's Superman, the CW show from Superman and Lois. I love that Superman because it has an amazing balance of Superman, cool, big action, but it also has a balance of Superman, Clark Kent, the family man, and understanding the balance between Superman and family and understanding what's right and wrong and the values you need to teach everyone. And so you don't really get that in Man of Steel at all. And I think a big part of that was, this was the start of the universe, and it was also a very tonally strict movie. Like there's not much leeway you get with what Zack Snyder is trying to achieve with the character and the tone of the movie as a whole. And that's kind of what you build your DC universe off of. 
So it kind of starts at a lower point with Man of Steel, in my opinion. Moving up the list, in fourth place for me is Aquaman. I think this movie is actually really, really good. James Wan just does an amazing job with the lore of Atlantis, but also Jason Momoa completely bodies this character. Like, he feels like, okay, here's the thing, right? You can have a character feel like a character. In my opinion, Zachary Levi, he feels like Shazam. But Aquaman, like, Jason Momoa is Aquaman. Bro, if Jason Momoa just walked up on the beach, like, right now on some just Aquaman shit, like, popped out of the water, I would not be, like, I would be shocked. Do you know what I mean? Like, I would be a little, like, I would be a little, I might be like, what? But I wouldn't be, I wouldn't run in the crib. I'd be like, that's Aquaman. Anyways, I just, I really love the way this movie feels. I love the feel of Atlantis. I love the feel of the action. I also, I think the villainous side of it is a little bit weak, right? I think the whole story of the lost son of Atlantis fighting for his spot in the throne, leading it, like, I think all that, it's cliche, but it works. Along with that is the setup of Black Manta. And I'm a big fan of Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm a big fan of his. And seeing him in this movie set up as Black Manta, like you get a little bit of an action scene with him. And then you see his setup and you see where they're going in Aquaman 2 with it. I just love the way that they implement his character so well into the story. And that's something you really don't get with superhero, or at least individual superhero franchise franchises like certain like Captain America movies, Iron Man movies, Guardians, like you don't see movies that are set up in the actual origin movie and Aquaman really gets that. I, I just love the way that they go about expressing what the future of Aquaman is going to be like in just this one movie alone. But along with that, I just love how visceral the action is. It is so grand, but it feels very personal with that family story in the middle of it, connecting all of it. And just in general, James Wan's direction. I mean, it's James, it's James Wan. I really love the way that the action is directed in terms of it just being very dynamic, I guess you could say. Especially there's this, the, I think it's the opening scene with, I think it's Nicole Kidman's character or the fight scene in the house. That scene had my mind blown in the theater and then the action just keeps getting better and better and better. <laughs> There's amazing slow motion moments. That final fight on, I think it's like the top of a ship. That is also really, really great. Again, I just love, I just love every element about this movie. Like, it's such a cool movie. Anyways, moving on to third place for me is Wonder Woman. I really love this movie just because it feels like the perfect mix of what Zack Snyder wanted to do with a darker tone. Being introduced in Batman v Superman, you kind of have an idea of what Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman is going to be like. This movie really humanizes her. It adds a context and honestly a layer of just relatability to her character. Someone out of time, but that can actually protect them. It's also a just... In general, it's a, it's a story that's entertaining, right? You have the great DC action, the great production value, but I think where this movie just has its slight fault compared to my number one and number two spots is that the final battle just feels like it's doing way too much. Like, this is where I also feel like I could switch my three and four at any moment between Aquaman and Wonder Woman because both of these movies are perfectly executed in regards to just telling a great compelling story where you get the origin of a hero, you get the origin of the understanding of the world, and you kind of get their worldview as a god. But at the same time, what separates Wonder Woman for me is the fact that it's a bigger character change than what Aquaman goes through, and I feel like you need that in an origin movie, but again, I feel like the final act kind of strays away from it a little too much. I see what they're doing there with the whole like big CG final battle, the fire, the gods, like it's all cool. It's a great buildup and it feels like it pays off really, really well, but it just feels a little bit too distant from what feels like a great war movie that we had prior to the first, the, the, the final act. But in second place for me is Shazam. I don't know really the public perception of this movie. Like I don't really hear many people talk about it to be honest, but I really love this movie. Like it is genuinely, I wouldn't say it's one of the best comedy movies of all time. Like I wouldn't put it top 10. 
but it's on the side of one of the greatest, in my opinion, just because it is so emotional. And maybe it's just me, maybe it's because I connect to it, and that's probably what the case is. But I really just love what they do. And I think this movie was made for like 95 million, which in comparison to all the other comic movies be being made nowadays, that's pretty cheap for a comic book movie. And they do a great job of just telling a simple story about family, about losing family, but also about gaining family. And I this sounds really stupid, but it's just a childish movie. And it's I love that. I talked about this a little bit in my Shazam Fury of the Gods initial reaction slash review video, but I'm not feeling comic book movie fatigue. And Shazam, it like the original Shazam, it feels like a, a classic comic book movie. Like there's literally nothing more to the movie than just telling a story about a kid who can turn into an adult. That's all that the movie is. But it does an amazing job of telling that simplistic story. And I think that's pretty much in part to just David F. Sandberg's direction and just the way that he goes about executing the comedy, the serious moments, but also the horror elements of what this movie had the potential of being with like the seven deadly sins and stuff like that. And so I think it's a great balance of what everything, like I said, I said this when I was talking about Fury of the Gods is it feels like the DC universe or the DC extended universe has had a problem with balancing tones, but this movie and my number one are honestly, honest to God, might just be the most perfectly balanced comic book movies with comedy and serious darker tones. I would say the only other like non-DCEU movie that I would say balancing like actual comedy, like being genuinely hilarious, but also being dark as hell would be Avengers Infinity War. I wouldn't even put like Logan up there or Spider-Man 2 because they're not funny, funny movies. But these two movies that I'm gonna, I'm the, the next one I'm gonna talk about in Shazam, they are hilarious. Like they have so much comedy in them, yet they can still make you tear up and cry. But with that being said, my number one is The Suicide Squad. I, I don't, I really don't know how to talk about this movie to be honest because there is so much going on. There are so many characters, so many stories, so many plot points. Like this movie feels like it's 10 hours long, but in the best way possible because there's so many character arcs and there's just, there's actually so much happening in this movie. I rewatched it recently and I was, so, I was genuinely surprised as to how much James Gunn really fit into this movie while still making it all feel very, very fleshed out. I'm actually gonna look up the runtime right now because I'd be surprised that this movie wasn't nearing like three hours long. It's only two hours and 12 minutes. Wow, okay, I, <laughs> I did not know that because wow, I thought this movie was way longer than that. Okay, here's the thing, that's a compliment though because this movie stuffs so much. It's basically stuffed to the top in my opinion and it has so many great elements. I mean, also what it does really well is it creates like these antagonistic figures but puts them in an anti-hero way. Like they're not good people at all but James Gunn as the director knows that and I'm obviously he works best when he's directing teams and we've seen that with Guardians of the Galaxy but this movie really takes it to a whole other level in my opinion because it can also have the freedom of being rated R and I don't I, it, for me it's not necessarily a thing of like oh a movie has to be rated R to be good like that's not my thinking at all but with the Suicide Squad when you make it rated R you have an extra boundary that you can push towards and the ceiling is so much higher. There's so much more potential that you have and James Gunn fulfills all of that potential and honestly more. But guys, that pretty much wraps it up for my ranking of the 13 DCEU movies. I know I rambled on for some movies more than others, but this universe is very, very interesting and I'm excited, or I'm more intrigued to see what the future holds. Like I said at the beginning of this video, let me know your ranking for all 13 of these DCEU movies in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.